Hello, everybody out there. Um, I think nobody has found us yet, but that doesn't really matter um, because what we're going to do right now is something we did already before the computer crashed. And uh, apparently we still need to solve technical problems. Kannst du mich hören? Um, inzwischen höre ich äh, doppelt. Ja, warum sollte auch Alles gut. mal was klappen? Ich wechsle. Wir können uns sowieso alleine unterhalten, gerade weil niemand... Äh ja, jetzt <lacht> höre ich dich wieder auf meinen normalen Lautsprecher. Ich habe da umgestellt, wenn du noch etwas sagen möchtest. Hallo? Alles, ich jetzt höre dich wunderbar. Vielleicht alles sogar eine Spur zu laut. Aber alles, alles gut. Ähm, es ist ja niemand da äh, von dem, was ich hier sehe. Aber vielleicht gehen wir dann einfach durch die Präsentation. Ja, ich würde sagen, wir schauen, machen. ob noch jemand dazu kommt. Oder lassen wir es lieber sein, wenn niemand kommt. Das würde ich sehr schade finden für die, die interessiert sind. <lacht> Da hast du recht. Okay, so, ah, there is somebody. <laughs> ah, hi. Speak English instead of German. Hello. And uh, yeah, we just uh, get started then, I think. Um, just uh, who doesn't know it yet, I'm talking to my husband, Roy. Hi, um, Kirsten. Roy. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, Roy is uh, from Austria and he is a specialist in um, oracle cards, especially the ones uh, called uh, Zigeuner Wahrsagekarten, now called Traditionelle Wahrsagekarten, so the gypsy cards. And we tried uh, about 10 days ago to uh, connect astrology to the gypsy cards because as you might know, the gypsy cards don't have any numbers on them and uh, they don't have anything like uh, um, systems uh, like you could use for Linormand or Kipper. So uh, we are trying to set up a kind of matrix for the gypsy cards and uh, we already showed you something which you can do, which is uh, working with light motifs. We did a video on this. It's uh, in the show notes if you want to uh, go through this. And this time we want to show you our thoughts on gypsy and astrology, which are not uh, commendatory. If you want to use other connections, that's totally fine. But we want to show you what we think uh, is a good idea and uh, for us, it is still work in progress, right? Yes. Okay, so we get uh, started. We prepared a presentation. If you have any comments or questions, just let us know and we will uh, comment or uh, answer your questions. <laughs> so what we're doing right now is repetition because we already talked about all this in our previous video. But uh, just to get into the spirit, we just uh, show you again these cards and then you have a full video as well to look through if you want to look uh, later at this video. Rowie, do you want to say something about this? Uh, yes, this is a start chart. Uh which we known about uh, astro astrology, astro astrology charts. Um, uh, we saw the five uh, permanent uh, position, the most post metal position start um, with the unspurred joy in the left. It's the position uh, where uh, our, in, in our, uh, visit in our thing we start with an astrology chart and on this it, position you know about my terrible english and so uh, you know why kirsten is also here and she is my translator to you in english shell okay language. so 
so what we see here now is uh, the four major points of a chart and we see uh, the joy card for our ascendant the love card for our descendant we see the um, happiness card is it happiness yes uh, as the yes. mc as the highest the point in the chart um, fortune sorry and the house as the i see the lowest point in the chart and the middle card which is Hello, nice to, that you joined us. Um, the middle card is um, constancy. And yeah. Constancy is kind of the yeah the, the higher self which we positioned in the middle of the chart, okay. and the higher self card obviously is um, uh, uh, if you look at it, it already has a kind of chart feeling with these uh, beams leaving uh, from the middle to the outside so this is why we thought this is a quite good setup hi it's you yasna nice th that you joined us so this is something we already explained in the video before and uh, the now we go through all the other cards which are still 31 left and we kind of attributed them to either a star sign or a planet conjunct with the star sign or a house conjunct with this star sign, which leaves us to the first house. And uh, whoops. No. That's long enough. <laughs> and to the, what, what are the ones called in English, Roy? Which one? Uh, the, the lover. The lover and the widow. And the widow. Right? Yes, correct. Yeah. And um, this, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm trying <laughs> to, to read the comments parallel. So, okay, like this. So, why did we do this? We thought that these two cards um, are about ourselves, are about being active, either with experience like the widower or uh, without so much experience <laughs> like the lover. Is this right, Rory? That sounds good, yes. Okay, so these are the two very active cards. You also say it's the animus of uh, the gypsy cards. So we, can, we have connected them to these aspects. For the second house, for either Taurus Venus or house number two, we thought that, uh, um, again, the English, please, Roy. Uh, fidelity and uh, money is the second. Uh, one. That fidelity and money are quite fitting because money is about um, our resources, the things we, are, uh, we have in order to generate money or do something we want to do, right? Uh, Yes, but uh, that's not enough. So Venus is also the thing of all beautiful things. And you see inside the box, there are not only money, there are also jewelries and, and other things inside. And, mm -hmm. I, th and, uh, and I think that's the, 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 the point about uh, Venus. Yeah, there's um, there there's loads of stuff you can get out of it. Though we have um, the present card for this, which we put somewhere else, though, um, and we have the, the the fidelity card in this position because this card is about life opposite death. So it's quite a good expression for the um, axis of Taurus and Scorpio. Yeah. But also it's about uh, remembering, uh, remembering what is a life of somebody and just also perhaps um, to stick to oneself, um, to be, uh, yeah, to be able to express oneself. These are thoughts we put there, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. Sorry that we are stuttering a bit here. We 
still work with technical problems and it's quite annoying. <laughs> I'm just, uh, uh, I had enough of uh, going online sometimes. <laughs> oh, come on. So here was the first uh, technical problem last time when we did the presentation, of course, when Mercury is present. Um, and as you can see, we have three cards for the um, houses of uh, for Mercury, uh, Gemini and house three. Yeah. Hi, Christine. Say, uh, great that you're writing. this. I don't know why I can't see uh, your names today. Very strange. Um, nevertheless, uh, we're still online. That's something after all. <laughs> so for these uh, for these options, we chose um, the letter, yes. message, message, and visit, and visit, because these are all three house or mercurial or Gemini activities. One is one is writing, one is talking, and the other one is meeting people in uh, not in a in a romantic sense or whatever but just to get connections right so yeah. this is why we yeah. thought these three uh, cards fit well uh, but for me is the, the the card of the middle the message uh, one of the the most interesting cards so it's shown us mercury uh, and we know about the cudeus uh, stab which Caduceus. is uh, yes uh, yeah. This is one one sign of him, and it's also the, the the sign of health. Yeah. Well, the Mercury uh, Mercury would definitely be uh, the message, I think. Yeah. yeah. While um, the letter could be more Gemini, and uh, the visit more House Three, I would yeah. say. Here in in for this house, this, this works quite well. For other houses, it's more problematic. So for the fourth house, and all the people who have come now, please ask your questions if you have questions, right? Um, for the fourth house, we have decided, uh, since the fourth house has also to do with cancer and the moon, so it's about desire and um, dreaming. So um, which cards did we choose, Roy? Gift is the second one. Gift and desire, right. Um, desire, especially this, this dreamy Cancerian prospect. Also, she's standing in the house, but looking outside what you expect from mm -hmm. a Cancer. And uh, the gift card is also because the fourth house is about um, our childhood, but also about perhaps what we get from our parents, uh, not only material-wise, but also as, as ideas, how we will go through life. And this is why we connected the card to the fourth house. That, that's correct. But uh, the, the uh, desire card is the, the, the cancer for myself. So it's the, the mother is uh, he's looking about everybody and uh, she's looking uh, where is the lover and uh, which time he will arrive also and I think that's that's the the, the moon in our in yeah our, I think so too do, do we have a mother card would the widow be the mother I think the the, the widow is is the mother uh, herself yes. Hi, Yasna. So you now worked out how to show yourself. Interesting. <laughs> it's a bit weird today with the comments. Um, yeah. So this is, I think, almost as far as we got last time. So now we have two cards for the Leo, the Sun, house number five option. Which are these, Rory? Uh, baby and... Uh... A merriment. Merriment. Well, merriment, I think, is quite obvious. The fifth house is the card of, uh, is the house of pleasure and of fun and yes. of flirting. So this is all in this card, right? Correct. And it's also, I, I go out, I have uh, much of fun. I like to dance. I make party. I, I make rumba samba. 
exactly. While the um, child card is about, um, well, new beginnings. But uh, for me, when I thought about astrological correspondences, when we talked about this, for me, this is also the inner child card. And the inner child fits quite well to the sun, Leo. Yes, uh, that's, that's a, a good idea. But I think each baby, it grows up, he makes a lion. He, he would build his own world. Yeah. And they want to fight. And, and, and he has to fight. Life is a fight. And I, I think that's, that's a good... Uh, think that we have to know uh, each baby has to fight. Yeah, and I, I like this idea about it uh, has to explore its own world and uh, yeah. build up its own world because this is also something about the sun. Yeah. And um, of course, the fifth house is the house of children as well. That's, so that's we look into this house in order to see uh, not only childbirthing, but also projects you want to develop. And uh, the baby can represent projects, right? That is uh, perfect, Kirsten. Yeah. Do you make some courses for, in, in my yes. own? I learn and learn and learn thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. So the next um, astrological correspondence is for house number six, which is actually connected to Virgo and again Mercury. So obviously you can put the Mercury card here as well if you want to. But uh, the focus of the sixth house especially and of Virgo is more that of work, of routine, um, of uh, yeah, doing stuff we don't always want to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we put their um, anger, yeah. which is almost the only working card in the gypsy deck, isn't it? Sorry, I can't see anyone will work on this card. I no. see only uh, a position with... Uh, a high and the low position and the, the 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 fight against the fight against with with words and i think that's uh the the younger make some mistakes and they have to uh, which have uh, his gift for this and uh, i think uh, i think it's it's uh, near by the working situation but it's not there it, it's not a working situation but it is about work it's nearby. Nearby. Well, there. Okay. Maybe the youngest has uh, want to do to to fish something away. We don't know it. Yeah. Um, aber das ist doch jetzt in einem Work uh, in einem Arbeitskontext trotzdem. We don't know it. Kirsten, maybe he he is a thief and he has stolen something, and the, the older one fetched him up. I, we don't okay. know it. So we saw only the situation. Okay. okay, so we can't agree on this one, Roy and I. <laughs> but um, it's about something unpleasant, whatever, right? What is yes. the, the the meaning of this card in a reading? Uh, this the situation about uh, this the the worst discussion. It's a discussion. Yeah, but the worst one. Uh, I, I, not a good discussion. Correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> people are enjoying themselves. Great. <laughs> so isn't it funny that we are quarreling about the anger card? <laughs> I like this as well. <laughs> I have never uh have so much discussion <laughs> with other card only with the anger card it's very yeah, we never had a discussion about a card like this it's quite funny okay yeah, it's, it's, it's the it. card about the discussion this um, is discussion um christina says that constancy is more about work um well that's that's what some people say i think you don't think constancy is work do you Roy? no for you, 
when you look for yeah. work, it's the house usually, isn't so we, it? We have one problem uh, by the gypsy cards. We have no card about working situation no and and uh, it was for me uh, by, by myself it was, it was so terrible in the starting um, situation uh, when i start with readings and for myself it's the uh, card house yeah i i myself am reluctant with constancy for working because it's uh, so much about higher self Sorry, this is constancy, and this is the 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 the, the uh, eye of Horus, and I don't think that a good is work. Yeah, well, some people say perhaps it's about um, not the, so much work like in a Virgo house, but more about. Um, uh, finding one's calling, so Berufung. Yeah, but that is not work. Yeah, no, no, that's not work. So for work is for by myself, by by, by my opinion, uh, I have to do uh, in some sometime I love it and sometime I hate it. It's work and I get money for it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I Berufung so. is not a work. Berufung is what I get. Yeah, it's it's a calling. Yeah. So this is how we do it. But I know, or we know that there are books out there which say constancy is the working card. Yeah, but sorry by myself. Sorry about my work, uh, my words. That's bullshit. It, 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 it doesn't work by myself when I make readings. And, and this is your working card. Doesn't work by myself. Sorry. It's the eye of God. Uh, it is always watching, always present. It represents work in the way that we are steady and busy in work. Yeah, this goes more in the kind of uh, calling and um, higher profession, I would say. Well, another thing we can disagree on. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go to the second card in the uh, house, number six. So, so I, I, I have to take one sentence about this uh, uh, it's a, it's a, always a present, yes, but work is not always a present. Sometimes it's very hard. So, yeah. yeah. But but perhaps we can leave other people to what uh, works for them. I don't know who's writing this, but for somebody here, the constancy card works as work card. So this is uh, this is okay we're just telling what what we, our experiences are I, right I, I, I think i have to explain why is the the card house by myself uh, the working card uh, I, I know in, in in this time when the the cards will paint it uh, they have other uh, places for the work so the work outside in in the woods and in, in the matter also but now in our time so in which place we will work uh, 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 um, uh, IT specialist or something else his work into a house and so by myself by my my opinion I think the working card by myself is the house yeah I think everybody got this and I just say that everybody should stick to what works for them hmm. and there this is, uh, let's talk about the second card, which is uh, some money. Some money. And some money we chose for Virgo, Mercury, or house number six, because it is um, about having uh, an uh, outcome, having uh, enough money to go by, to go by basically. And this is something which we also attribute to the house number six to have enough money to go through the day it's about every day um yeah everyday income so to speak hmm. um yeah this is <laughs> somebody says the house is the place of work for co for the COVID period <laughs> so, um yeah, I'm. I'm sure 
perhaps we do something on this at one point. Um, just these two cards and uh, think about this together because it is quite interesting. I think this is one of the main things people who read Gypsy cards quarrel about. But my Libra Ascendant wants peace. And this is why I go to the next <laughs> sheet here. <laughs> so, yeah. you broke the spell and are now at uh, the house number seven. <laughs> yeah. And again, I just realized, again, we are in the um, element of air and have three cards. We had three cards for Gemini and now we have three cards for um, Libra. And of course, Libra has to do with Venus, so we chose um, the sweetheart. Yeah. We also chose the widow, because for the first house, we chose sweet, uh, lover and widower. So this is more the romantic interest in a way. And I have an echo now. Do you have some? No, I was okay. perfect by myself. Uh, I'm not. Um, and we chose marriage because in the house number seven, obviously, the, it's about um, partnership, about contracts, about marrying, perhaps. So this was a card we thought would well work with Libra, right? Correct. Yes. Um, I'm not a Libra, uh, Christine. I have a Libra ascendant, which suffers a lot at times. <laughs> so these are our thoughts for this is, this is the seventh house. Then we have Scorpio, and wow, that's <laughs> where we put most of the cards for Pluto, Scorpio, and house number eight. Almost all the cards we don't like. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But... Um, all these four cards have some Scorpio or Plutonian or house number eight aspect. Um, obviously, death in uh, comparison again to uh, fidelity in Taurus uh, matches quite well because um, the house of uh, house number eight is often about death or crisis. Um, the death card in Tarot is also attributed to Scorpio, and it's quite um, Plutonian. Then we have, um, what's the first one called in English? It's enemy. Enemy. Well, enemy, What? what why do you think enemy, Hui? Sorry? Why do you think, why, why did we use enemy there? So uh, Scorpio uh, is also one, he wants to know everything. And sometimes everything of the, not of the good one. And so yeah. is uh, the enemy near to Scorpio. Or maybe the best Scorpio. So we don't know uh, what did the, the guy want. We don't know how many he knows about us. Uh, and he's only staying and watching. Yeah. This quality of Scorpio to be able to observe everything, yeah. remembering everything. And and he don't forget anything. He doesn't forget anything. And he gets it out when it's useful for him. This what's uh, what we linked uh, enemy to. Then we have um, falseness. <clears throat> yeah. Falseness, um, I thought because it's playing playing in a backyard. Yeah. And uh, sometimes Pluto is attributed to things which are not in the open, but more, yeah, yeah. In, in the back, uh, undercover um, situations. So this is why we thought this might also work quite well for these uh, three attributes. And we also took uh, jealousy there. Again, we have this observing quality in this card. Yeah. Um, but perhaps we could also put this uh, to Leo or the fifth house, but then there is a Scorpio aspect with it, this guy in the back, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So um, maybe maybe he's the enemy on the first card. We don't know it. Yeah, exactly. They, they, there we have again the light motif thing we talked yeah. about in uh, our first presentation here. Um, what would you say is the difference between the enemy and jealousy? Um, enemy want to know everything about it anybody mm -hmm. uh, jealousy i don't know about this both person mm -hmm. so it's the the interesting is nearer by by one thing so I, i'm not sure whether i got this so so the the enemy is all about gathering information as yeah. much as he can yeah. yes and the jealousy guy he's focused on one thing on one thing, on one person, on uh, one, uh, on the most on love. Okay. Okay, got this. Interesting. Yeah, but these are two things I can uh, see with Pluto and Scorpio, definitely. Mm. So the next thing we have is uh, house number uh, nine, Jupiter, Sagittarius. Immediately we get lighter cards. Yeah, better one. Um, the journey we took because um, the ninth house, but also Sagittarius, is about traveling, uh, open up one's hor horizon, right? Yeah. Then we have uh, the oh, eclectic. eclectic. Great work. The eclecticist. Geistlicher is much easier. <laughs> 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 it's a very strange word, isn't it? So um, he is a kind of a spiritual guide. Yeah. So that's why we put uh, um, him here. He could be a Jup Jupiterian influence. We could argue that constancy will fit here or on the MC. So this is also a quality. And we have... Um, the hope. Um, hope there because uh, after the dire cards of the eighth house of Scorpio, the, the Scorpio cards, we have this uh, revelation and a feeling of uh, liberty. And again, we have on this card this uh, horizon, the traveling. Um, so, um, Usually Sagittarius has always a vision he wants to follow or she wants to follow. That's why we came up with this one. Right? Yeah. Good. You have you are having a discussion there about ace house, uh, eighth house planets, I see. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> oh no, I'm going back to the ace house. Um so Capricorn. now we have number 10. And uh, for these, we chose um, judge Which. and officer. Yeah, but officer is definitely wrong. Why? So an, an officer in German is not an officer in English. So I mean, soldier, I... Uh, something else, a sergeant, and, but not an uh, officer. An officer is a policeman. Oh, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, so we have the um, military person. Yeah. Actually, it's not a, a somebody who is a, um, police a, arranging the traffic. But um, both guys have a, quite a Capricorn or Saturnian uh, influence. Definitely, yeah. the the military person is about status. Is about uh, having achieved something. Um, and he's very uh, um, right about the law. He doesn't. Yeah. Um, um, he, he's, all, he's he's rightful, right? Correct. He he has the, the the right on his side, and he he have to fight for them. Yeah. And and he always will fight for this. And he's uh, it, it, it's his work. Yeah. Yeah. And the judge obviously has much to do with Saturn. Um, he is uh, kind of uh, speaking judgment over us. And he is um, also, at best, he is uh, right with his judgment, right? Correct, yeah. 
Yeah. That's correct. Mm. So I think this is not so difficult um, to understand. Um, then we have uh, to continue the 11th house, um, Aquarius, Uranus, and um, there we put uh, uh, the thought card, but also the, um, what's it called? I can't read it. The Pearl. Uh, misfortune card. The misfortune card uh, we put there because uh, Uranian experiences can feel like um, a disaster at times because something very suddenly happens and we didn't uh, see it coming. So it has a kind of tower, speaking of the tarot, a kind of tower uh, feeling. And uh, this is a Uranian feeling. Yes. And the Aquarian feeling we thought quite uh, well here with thought because this is a very pensive card, somebody who thinks about stuff thoroughly, but not necessarily materializes their thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. So these are definitely Aquarian, uh, it has an Aquarian influence. I also thought, or we thought that the, um, unexpected joy card would fit in here. But then we thought it's better as the ascendant because uh, it's kind of, I go through the world and then I meet something and I react to it. So that's quite, quite ascendant like But as we said, you can make your own attributions. These are just our, our ideas for the whole thing. Yeah, and the last uh, cards, <laughs> again, we have a very full house, uh, again, a water house, which is full of cards. Um, we have uh, Malady, we have, can you give me the other names, Rui? Uh, a thief, uh, sadness and loss. Exactly. So the sadness card, could perhaps also go into the fourth house. It's also a moody card, a moony card. But uh, this melancholy Pisceans have about being in the world. Uh, this is a quality we saw in this card. Okay. Um, the melody and the loss card are there because these are two things. The traditional astrologers would put into the 12th house sickness and uh, losing stuff or hidden stuff. And uh, the theft card as well goes in this direction. So the thief steals things from us, us but it's also about secrecy, things which are not clear. I mean, it's a very shady card, a very shadowy. So this is uh, what why we thought uh, this is a good uh, way of uh, bringing these cards together. And um, the lost card obviously is also quite Neptunian because uh, it, it's illusion whether there's a winner or a loser on this card, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. That's our um, attributions and um, we wanted to make this video uh, also not only to um, give you an idea how you can experiment with the gypsy cards and make bring give them more depth, but also to ask what you think about this uh, to get feedback, which you don't need to give us right now, but it would be great to, to hear from you about this and your thoughts on that. Um, because obviously it's not perfect. It, if it would be per perfect, we had 36 cards uh, attributed to uh, equally on the Zodiac and we didn't manage this. Um, do you want to say anything, Roy, to this? No, I want to say thank you about uh, our visitors uh, inside and outside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you for, for visiting us. Uh, if you have some questions, give us a 
email or write outs. And uh, thank you very much for this nice Aussendung. I, I don't think it's good. it's an English word about this. Aussendung. <laughs> Um, I'm great. I'm thankful for your feedback, Brandt and Christine. Yeah, it, it's just something we play around with and uh, want to to think about. Thanks, Jan Jasna. Um, and um, the next thing we wanted to do, I told you today, what I thought would be a good idea, but I forgot. <laughs> No, you never thought of me. I oh, know, I remember. So, so we want to do a video on um, how we might connect uh, tarot and uh, the gypsy cards. We already gave two examples with a uh, death card and with the um, misfortune card. Um, but I'm sure we can do other correspondences. And uh, yeah, as we said, if you uh, have some ideas, get in touch with us. I mean, we're here on Facebook and in this group anyway, so you can write stuff down in the comments. And uh, this means for us now we have our Saturday evening and we'll um, come back with new ideas uh, sometime after the great event next weekend, the open day. Um, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm going to talk at the open day about Jane Austen and flirting. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Great, people want like the idea of tarot and gypsy. So we will do this next. Have a great uh, evening all out there. And um, I'm glad the technique worked out this time. Yeah. Thank you very much. And don't forget, never give up. Thank you. Bye -bye. Wait, uh, in, in Belgium, there is a, a book on astrology and uh, gypsy cards. Oh, please, I really would like to know about this. Uh -huh. um, uh, please send us uh, or just put in a link. Uh, into yeah, the that's comments. interesting. That would be really great. I guess it's in French then. We should handle this. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe in Dutch. In Dutch, well, yeah, could be. <laughs> anyway, have a great evening, everybody out there. Yeah, what's the name? I don't know who wrote this. Um, it's You still need to look it up. Okay, we speak to each other soon. Have a great evening and yeah, yeah. bye for now. Bye-bye.